Memories are ability to encode, store, retain and subsequently recall information and past experiences in the human brain. It can be thought of in general terms as the use of past experience to affect or influence current behaviour. Memory is essential to all our lives. Without a memory of the past we cannot operate in the present or think about the future. We would not be able to remember what we did yesterday, what we have done today or what we plan to do tomorrow. Without memory, we could not learn anything. Memory is involved in processing vast amounts of information. This information takes many different forms, e.g. images, sounds or meaning. For psychologists, the term memory covers three important aspects of information processing. Stages of memory, encoding, storage, retrieval. When information comes into our memory system from sensory input, it needs to be changed into a form that the system can cope with so that it can be stored. Think of this as similar to changing your money into a different currency when you travel from one country to another. For example, a word which is seen in a book may be stored if it is changed into a sound or a meaning, i.e. semantic processing. There are three main ways in which information can be encoded. One, visual. 2. Acoustic 3. Semantic For example, how do you remember a telephone number you have looked up in a phone book? If you can see it, then you are using visual coding, but if you are repeating it to yourself, you are using acoustic coding by sound. Evidence suggests that it's the principal coding system in the short-term memory is acoustic coding. When a person is presented with a list of numbers and letters, they will try to hold them in a short-term memory by rehearsing them, verbally. Rehearse is a verbal process regardless of whether the list of items is presented acoustically or visually. The principal encoding system in long-term memory appears to be semantic coding by meaning. This concerns the nature of memory stores, i.e. where the information is stored, how long the memory lasts for, how much can be stored at any time, and, how, and what kind of information is held. The way we store information affects the way we retrieve it. There has been a significant amount of research regarding the differences between short-term memory and long-term memory. Most adults can store between five and nine items in their short-term memory. Miller put this idea forward and he called it the magic number seven. He thought the short term memory capacity was seven items because it only had a certain number of slots in which items could be stored. However, Miller didn't specify the amount of information that can be held in each slot. Indeed, if we can chunk information together, we can store a lot more information in our short term memory. In contrast, the capacity of long-term memory is thought to be unlimited. Information can only be stored for a brief duration in short-term memory, but long-term memory can last a lifetime. This refers to getting information out storage. If we can't remember something, it may be because we are unable to retrieve it. When we are asked to retrieve something from memory, the differences between short-term memory and long-term memory become very clear. Short-term memory is stored and retrieved sequently. For example, if a group of participants are given a list of words to remember and then asked to recall the fourth word on the list, participants go through the list in the order they are heard it in from in order to retrieve the information. Long-term memory is stored and retrieved by association. This is why you can remember when you, what you went upstairs for if you go back to the room where you first thought about it. Organising information can help aid retrieval. You can organise information in sequences, such, such as alphabetically, by size or by time. Imagine a patient being discharged from hospital whose treatment involved in taking various pills at various times, changing their dressing and doing exercises. If the doctor gives these instructions in the order which they must help, must be carried out throughout the day, i.e. in sequence of time, this will help the patient remember them. The following video is a fine example of how human memory works. So what do you think 
What's he doing today? Oh, maybe, do you want to make some cupcakes, maybe? Yeah. We can do. Yeah. We need some ingredients first, though. We need, um, we need some flour, some eggs, milk and butter. So, do you want me to write a list for you to go get them? Ah, oh, don't worry, I can, I, can, I can remember that easily. You sure? Know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. No sweat, no sweat. Right, I'll see you later on. See you later. See you. Ashley is walking, thinking and repeating to himself the various items he needed to purchase from the store. Flour, eggs, milk and butter. Flour, eggs, milk and butter. But he finds this quite difficult, so he ditches the elaborative rehearsal technique and ends up for a different strategy called chunking. So, then he just needs to think of a pancake. Because to make a pancake, you need those items. Now his shopping experience will be less stressful. Cupcake, cupcake, cupcake. Ashley was about to get the flower when he got a call from Mike planning to buy two tickets for the following yeah. Saturday football match yeah. and distracted yeah. him in a process called <laughs> retroactive right. interference. Yeah. He put priority yeah. to remember the event over the flower and in the process completely yeah. forgot about getting the flower. Yeah, that's it, that's it. All right, take it easy. All right, bye now, bye now. Yeah, I knew he was forgetting something. Despite the image of cupcake in his mind, he's having a hard time to remember his list. That was it. Flower. That's what I forgot. Flower. Thankfully, he runs into a birthday card with images of flowers and made him a connection, and those flowers rem reminded him to get the flower. 